G'day and welcome to another technical video. I know these are tough times throughout the world right now, but I hope everybody is staying as positive as possible. Yes, I've had a haircut. Steffi may or may not be regretting that decision and I may or may not have a mullet. <laughs> in this video, I want to talk about vehicle maintenance, inspection, and the misconception on the amount of mechanical experience required to attempt a long-term international overland journey. So how much mechanical background or experience is actually required to do something similar to what we're doing? Absolutely none. So please don't ever let this be something that holds you back. Now I'm not saying I recommend attempting an international overland trip with absolutely no mechanical understanding of your vehicle only that it is definitely possible. At the bare minimum, know how to change a tire, check your fluid levels, perform a service, and give your vehicle regular, thorough inspections. The regular inspecting of an overland vehicle, or any vehicle, is what I want to talk about today. As far as inspections go, it's important to try and stick to a regular time frame. This depends on your driving conditions, but at a bare minimum, a full visual and physical inspection once a week and if you're on trails of hard driving, every day. Carry a tarpaulin and a set of dedicated work clothes. This will save you ruining your good clothes. Lay out the tarp and drive over it. It's much nicer to crawl under your vehicle on a tarp than laying in the dirt. I highly recommend and actually think it's very important when possible to have a clean car whilst inspecting. During our journey to Ushguli in Georgia, I regularly inspected the Defender covered in mud. It wasn't until after a good pressure wash and thorough inspection, I found the major cracks in both of our shock absorber brackets. Back to the inspection and the method I use. If I remember, I'll put on a pair of gloves, and I also wear a headlamp, even during the day, as it really helps seeing into all the areas up under the chassis and the engine bay. I start from the rear of the vehicle and make my way forward. As you inspect, don't just let your eyes pass over areas focus on each individual nut and bolt. Look for unusual fluid spots around the diffs, brake line and engine area. Don't be afraid to give something a tap or a hit if it looks loose. When I finish inspecting the underside of the vehicle, I slowly make my way around the sides. Again, looking very closely at nuts, bolts and the chassis. Also areas that receive impacts such as suspension housings and brackets. Inspect the tires closely and check the pressures. Pop the bonnet and inspect the engine bay. I like to physically touch all the hose connections I can reach and give them a slight jiggle along with the injectors. Again, taking note of any abnormal fluid discharge. We've spotted leaks in the engine bay nice and early in the past and rectified them before they became a larger problem. Check all of the fluid levels while you're there. Along with the Defender, we regularly inspect the camper and camper attachments to the truck. I won't talk too much more about inspecting your overland vehicle, only to highlight how very important inspections are. Even after regular inspection and maintenance, things will still go wrong. By servicing and maintaining, we only try to minimize these issues. It's very important to pay close attention to any abnormal noises or vibrations in your vehicle. A strange noise, a clicking noise. Don't ignore a new noise or vibration. New noises and vibrations drive me absolutely crazy. Until I've located the source. Investigating new noises can also lead to you catching a developing issue early, potentially saving you a lot of money and stress. Keep up with regular services to your vehicle. It's a good idea to know how to service your own vehicle but also nice to support local business and have the work done at a local mechanic. On our journey, we've been very fortunate to have extremely competent people work on our beloved bear, but we've heard from others some disaster stories also. By having at least a basic understanding of a service, you can politely pay close attention to a local mechanic that's working on your vehicle. Rotate your tires, including the spare, at regular intervals. We usually try to do it every 6,000 kilometers. It doesn't have to be exact. This will significantly prolong your tyre's lifespan. Treat your overland vehicle like you would your house. As our good mate over at A2A, Graham Bell explains in one of his books, we are overlanders first, off-roaders second. There is a difference. 
If I have an option of two trails, one being more difficult, I'll take the easy option every time. Whether or not you have an off-road capable vehicle or a road-based camping car, on a trip like we are doing, one thing you will undoubtedly encounter is corrugation or washboard roads. To me, corrugation is the ultimate vehicle destroyer. Over our years traveling outback Australia and all over the world, we've seen every make and model fall victim to the dreaded corrugation. In one instance, a brand new off-road camping trailer with a snapped axle on the Columbaroo Road in the Kimberleys, the same road that shook our Toyota 80 series to pieces. I've heard all the opinions in the world on how to tackle these horrible road conditions, including the popular sweet spot theory, traveling at higher speeds to float across the top. I believe this to be a myth, and that by traveling faster, you only increase the frequency of the vibration through your vehicle, which in turn leads to more issues. My advice, slow down on the corrugations. We will often travel at speeds as slow as five kilometers an hour all day to avoid the damage caused by long stretches of corrugated roads. What's the rush? Take your time and preserve your vehicle. I have a basic mechanical knowledge, but more importantly, I've got mates that are mechanics. Better yet, I've got mates that are defender experts. If something doesn't look right and it's beyond something I'm confident to attempt, I'll take a picture and phone a friend. Use the internet and social media. People are more than willing to help out. If you don't have a friend to phone, post a picture in one of these Facebook groups relating to your vehicle and you'll have countless people willing to lend a hand. I also carry the workshop manual for our vehicle. At the end of the day, excuse my French, shit happens. Inevitably, things outside of your control will go wrong. <laughs> All right. Can you keep the smile? <laughs> no, not really. Okay, we've just had a major disaster. Stay calm, don't panic, be patient. Everything will work out okay. The world is full of amazing, kind and helpful people who will go out of their way to get you back on the road. This is all part of the adventure and more often than not leads to great friendships and long lasting memories. Thank you very much for checking out today's video. Stay safe out there and we'll see you on the road. Stop when there is calm. Okay boss, okay. Ha ha ha.